Today I'm taking a look at the Hydez SD2. This is a Hi-Fi Type-C to 3.5mm adapter dongle DAC. This little guy is a DAC or a digital to analog converter that you plug in to your phone or your laptop and uh, you can plug some headphones into that and it is a Hi-Fi DAC. Now any device that plays music has a built-in DAC. That's how you hear things. But this promises an upgraded audio experience as well as greater support for high-res audio. So is that something that's going to make a big difference and is that worth it for you? Well, let's test that out and try to get some answers. Now, this was sent to me free for review along with some headphones, which I very much enjoyed, and you can check out my review on that. So there's not a whole lot that comes in the box. We get the DAC itself, as well as two adapters, a USB-C to Lightning for iOS devices, and a USB-C to USB-A adapter for PC. I did test this out on a few different devices. My phone, which is a Galaxy S10e, I tried an iPhone, and I tried a laptop with USB-C as well as my PC with USB-A. So I tested all the adapters, they all worked. I tested out on Android and iPhone, both worked fine, as well as uh, two different PCs, and both worked fine in that case as well. There's no software you need to install. You plug it in, you plug in some headphones. Uh, if you're on a PC, it will come up in your sound panel, and it automatically switched for me, but you can select it, either your built-in sound card or this will come up as its own sound card. But you don't need to install drivers. There's no software. There's nothing to control or configure with it. And um, yeah, it's a very simple device. It worked well in all cases. I didn't have any problem with it. As far as functionality, it's certainly easy to use. It does have an LED light that will change color based on the sample rate, which is a cool little feature. It also lets you know that it is working. They did tell us what the chip in this is. It is the ES9270, which is the 32-bit Hyperstream 2 Quad DAC, and that's got over 130 decibels of signal-to-noise ratio. So that's a pretty good spec, and it does support up to 32-bit files, which I don't know if that will ever really take off in music, but... If it does, and if you want to try listening to 32-bit music, this does support it, and that's kind of the point. I did do some test recordings and try to measure the difference between this and, say, the onboard DAC of my phone. I also tested it with uh, my PC sound card and a laptop. I tested this with some basic null testing, and if you don't know what a null test is, it's when you take two audio waveforms and you invert one of them. And if they're identical, you will get nothing, silence. And if they're not silent, then there is some difference. And you can then kind of measure and listen to the difference between these two things. So I recorded a lossless wave file through my phone and a laptop and my PC sound card with their built-in DAC and then with this in each device. And in every case, this did outperform the built-in DAC in the null test. Now, it didn't know completely, uh, and I think there's too many things for that to happen. Uh, it's running through cables and into an audio interface, so I didn't expect this to null out with the original source material exactly, but uh, it was about six decibels or so uh, quieter null. So that means it is performing more accurately than the built-in DAC. It was also a little bit louder in each case, uh, ranging from about two and a half to four decibels louder on this DAC than the built-in one. I can't think of many situations where four decibels more gain is going to really make or break your experience, because if you have to turn your headphones all the way up, you should probably be looking at a headphone amp. That's kind of an edge case, but I did think I'd point it out. It is slightly louder than the other DACs. Now, could I hear a difference? It was very difficult. Uh, the clearest was the built-in sound card on my computer. It's just the built-in Realtek 
kind of generic chip that's been around forever that is installed on a million motherboards. It's nothing fancy, and I rarely ever use it for anything because I have an audio interface. That one was the only one that was an obvious audible difference when I compared the recordings, and that's mainly because it had some kind of electrical interference. It had some very sharp peaks up in you know the 16 kilohertz range. Other than that, it's not something that I found to be a really audible difference. So maybe on some devices, on some devices that have very poor quality DAC, um, I could see this performing better. Uh, it does clearly perform better. It's just that it's not the kind of difference in performance that I found to be readily audible. Like it was not a night and day difference. It was very hard to hear any difference, but I could prove to myself that there was some on paper. It's just that it was very faint. Uh, so I try it out with several different headphones and on my speakers, and it was it was very difficult, if not impossible, to hear any difference. I don't think in a blind setting I could pick it out versus a built-in DAC, which isn't to say that this does a bad job, but that most devices have a pretty decent built-in DAC. Now, in some cases where your device doesn't support something like 32-bit audio, this would be useful. I don't know that 32-bit audio is ever going to become a standard or is really relevant because 24-bit audio is already beyond the limits of human hearing in terms of what it's capable of. But regardless, if you want to explore 32-bit audio, that's something you're interested in, this is a pretty affordable way to do that. This device comes in at $40, but they're launching it with an introductory price of $32. And uh, they also sent me a 5% off code. So if you want to pick one up, there is a code in the description. It's not an affiliate link. Um, I don't get a commission off it, but you get a discount. So if you want to buy one, use it. Probably the best use I found for it was with an iPhone that doesn't have a headphone port. Some iPhones, I think they changed it eventually, but if you don't have a headphone port on your iPhones and you want to use wired headphones, um, this is one option that works for it. You have to use the lightning adapter, so it's a little bit extra bulky, but you're already using wired headphones, so it's not so bad. Uh, and then you have a headphone port, which you can use wired headphones. So that's kind of useful. Uh, I suppose otherwise you'd have to get a headphone amp and that would be even more bulky. I wouldn't want to leave it attached to my phone all the time because it does stick out and I would be worried about this USB connection snapping off in my pocket if I left it in there. But if I was uh, using it at home, it's fine on a desk or with a laptop that's not really moving a whole lot, then it works great for that. Specs wise, it's a high quality DAC and it's easy to use. I think for most people, uh, except for some edge cases, it's not going to be a night and day difference like you would get switching out headphones. Uh, you can't necessarily expect that it'll completely revolutionize the way you listen to music. But for people who are interested in 32-bit audio or extra high sample rates, this is an affordable way to test that stuff out and see if you notice something magical about it yourself. As always... Thanks for watching, and don't forget to smash like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.